Hey everybody, it's Anthony from ComicsEatingUp.net. I'm joined by Blind Adam tonight via phone. We're doing the lockdown podcast. I'm going on week three myself. Um, I actually haven't been out of the house in ten days now. Uh, Adam, how are you doing? Uh, it's thirty days to me. And can you tell me things about the outside world and how it used to be? <laughs> well, what I can tell you is lately we've had a lot of wind blowing through. It was sunny one day. I was able to go outside and play catch with my son, play some basketball. And uh, after that, it's become windy and stormy the past couple of days. It's your uh, traditional April weather, um, you know. So I don't know what to say. I, I honestly haven't been outside in two days. Just I haven't been outside other than to grab uh, Amazon packages off my porch. I hope you're putting them in the garage for a little bit and uh, doing the whole sanitizing thing with those things. Yeah, they go straight to the basement. We have boxes set up for uh, quarantining things. Um, it's going to be interesting because I ordered a thousand bags and boards from Matt's Baseball Supplies. Uh, I think it's at mattsbaseball.com. I'll throw up the website here on the side just to give them a shout out. But I ordered a thousand bags and boards, 20 short boxes, and a um, hundred comic mailers. Uh, because I'm running low on comic mailers. I've been selling a lot of stuff uh, this past week. eBay finally came through and gave us 200 free listings. I think they need to do that more often to help uh, spark the comic book uh, economy, but, you know, the economy in general. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been on eBay trying to do a little bit of shopping, and, you know, I need to, like, set reminders to when things are actually going to end so I don't lose things just for, 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 for forgetting about them. Yeah. It stinks. What stinks is I, I lost the Holy Grail. Oh, what were you bidding on? One of the uh, tanzines with the, the uh, Stanley uh, Th April Fool's Day cover. Oh, okay, cool. So, I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of sales going on on eBay. A lot of books are being listed. Um, I usually do a uh, cheap slab post. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that's the one I did not get to read yet. So, what cheap slabs are you seeing on eBay at the moment? Honestly, uh, so I set alerts for um, CGC 9.8 under 25, under 20, and under 50. Um, and then when kind of interesting books come up, and I, I kick myself because I was waiting till uh, Wednesday to order a book, and I said, hey, if this book is still there on Wednesday, I'm going to go ahead and grab it. And of course, someone came along and snatched it. But out of that post, I think, I don't know, like 30 or 40 slabs sold from that post alone so it's kind of funny that you know people are looking for deals right now and people are, are willing to fire sale things because the economy has kind of turned south here a little bit um what are you seeing on ebay uh right now i i'm, I'm seeing stuff listed i've never seen listed before in a while i mean i i i, I typed in a lead sorkin autograph harley quinn hmm and I found some 9.6 and 9.8 comics autographed by Eileen. Uh, even though they're, they're still up there, there are still like four-digit books. Yeah. I was still like, man, I've never seen these before. Hmm. Now, I had, uh, on our forum and on our Wednesday Open forum, uh, somebody was talking about I, Lucifer, the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those have been showing up, and those are really hard to find, and I haven't seen any, you know, in forever. Yeah, I, think I, I know he posted in the, in the Wednesday forum, he was like, I found a number three, so under a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, back even back in the 90s when that went Poison Elves, God Rest, Drew's Soul. A hundred dollar book back in the mid nineties. I, you know, I was a big Poison Elves fan. I love indie comics, and it was it was books like uh, Poison Elves, Strangers in Paradise, uh, Stray Bullets. Those were the things that I really uh, I really enjoyed. I mean, I bought the Crow off the shelf, and I still kick myself for selling it. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, it wasn't, you know, anybody who knows the real Turtles knows that it wasn't hokey like, you know, the Archie stuff or the animated cartoons. But, I mean, the Turtles were groundbreaking at the time. The Tick, these are all things that I were buy, you know, that I was buying off the shelves when they were coming out. See, I was buying the weirder stuff. I was, you know, milk and cheese, dork, all Lindsay and stuff I bought off the shelf. Yeah. Yeah, just because, hey, you know, Lindsay can draw a beautiful redhead, so... He can. And Milk and Cheese, by far, is one of my favorite books. The uh, uh, the Merv Griffin strip is one of my favorites. Mil Milk and Cheese, Dairy Products Gone Bad, just uh, one of the best uh, short strip form comic books around. I mean, I, I love Milk that, and Cheese. That, that, that Greed Six, which is their first appearance, is s such a tough find. Yeah, yeah. But see, 
I, I'm hoping that, stuff like that comes out. I'm definitely hoping stuff like uh, like that, you know, starts hitting the markets. In a way, I'm hoping that it does. In a way, I hope it doesn't because I hate seeing people sell things that they really love. But at the same time, it opens it up for collectors and, you know, hopefully this gets to help people and their families and their situations by selling off some of these books. Sometimes, unfortunately, in these times, and I remember this from 2008, um, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures, and unfortunately, you know, collectibles are the third things to go. CBSI presence, notification, YouTube, yeah, it, it's sad but true that, you know, it's... It's the material things. I mean, I'm all for minimizing. I say that, but, you know, I have 40,000 comic books, um, 200 pops, statues, toys, original art, animation cells. I mean, I've got all this stuff down here that, um, you know, that if I needed to, I could sell. And I, I, I would gladly sell it to put, you know, food on the table or keep the roof over our heads. But um, it's tough to let things go sometimes. I feel bad for the people talking about it or the things that you're seeing on eBay. Or... Uh, I'm actually seeing, like, XN 129 is down a little bit. You know, it's a book that I'm actually hunting for, and I'm, I'm hoping the one that's at 45 bucks right now stays there. Okay. What else are you seeing? Yeah, you know, Punchline is still hot. Yeah, and, you know, if comics never were to come out again in you know the, the floppies that we know punchline will be the last spec that ever happened is it, it scary or what it is a little scary the fact that punchline would be the last spec um we've released some of the um teaser images from the upcoming batman book and it's pretty cool she's gonna be pretty wicked that i'd hate to think that they'd never release these again um what? I actually think the design would make a great cosplay. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. As we get back as we when and as we get back to conventions as we know them. Yeah. Well, here's a weird thing. So Javits Center, where they hold uh, New York Comic Con, is currently a field hospital. Yeah, don't remind me about that. I'm trying to forget about that. So, are they putting COVID nineteen patients in there, or is this for people who don't have the COVID that you know need to be? attended to or how are they working that i think it's for people without COVID, but i'm not i, I would have to get an email you on that because i'm not exactly sure because it's it's COVID patients almost april we're in april now i don't know if they would feel comfortable going in there in october to be honest you know and that's kind of what i was thinking i've already been talking about new york comic-con and what my plans were and now i'm super cautious i'm a germaphobe um, not quite ha Howie Mandel level, but, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a germaphobe. And thinking about that convention center with all the people in it, all you know, a lot of New Yorkers, and New York is the epicenter, the COVID-19 breakout here in the United States. That's a scary thought, especially if they're using it at a hospital. Now, granted, they're fully going to scrub the place down. Yeah, but still, I mean, that's not a guarantee. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the scary thing. Yeah, it's not I, a you hear the rumors that there's an 80 percent chance right now that San Diego's not happening this year. I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, so, me being a Vegas guy and using Vegas odds, I, I any if San Diego doesn't happen, it's going to be a, a, a major blow to the industry. Yeah. So, and then that would put the pressure on New York to kind of be the savior. So, I mean, yeah. from all the trending that I'm hearing, I'm hearing July or August before this kind of, the first wave of this kind of passes over. That puts October out, but what also scares me is that there could be a second flare-up that they talk about. And oh, yeah, like, like what happened in China, right? Right. So, it's it, everything right now is on hold. And it's very weird, because in the past three weeks... Everything that we've known has fundamentally changed. And not to mention the industry that we're such a part of that we love so much has fundamentally changed to where it's completely shut down. Yeah, as to the back issues, you know, I'm still seeing things, we're still seeing things do well in that department right now, but I, I was always under the belief that, hey, new issues will sell back issues. I, and I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. But that kind of leads into, when we're talking about back issues, Marvel's pushed their slate of releases back, their uh, movies and TV shows. 
as well as their comics. Uh, May and June comics are off the board. Right. So, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think's going to happen with some of these back issues that have been so hot and heavy? I can see them dipping. Yeah. Depending on what it is, I can see them dipping. Uh, there's a one. There's one book. Um, I wish that would dip that isn't and is a forty dollar book for stupid reasons. Oh yeah, that the the book that shall not be named. Um, I, uh, I and hate that book. Mark Jewell's variant for it. I don't know if so I'm going to be at New York this year for the first time since its inception. And I agree with you. I'm, I'm, you know, I've gone the past eight years, I think, or something like that. And this is the first one that I'm actually saying. You know, I might skip it. Now, you know, I go as a fan. I go as, you know, a media person, but I go also as a flipper, and to be honest with you, like, the past year was probably the worst year for flipping. Two years ago, I made so much money off toys, it wasn't even funny. This year was kind of a break-even, make-a-small-profit thing, but it's still cool because, you know, I go up and I hang out with the friends. We did the, the uh, Chew well, get-together. We, we, did, we did the hangout afterwards, mm-hmm. which Absolutely. Really well. Yeah, no, that was fun. Uh, you know... Uh, yeah, nice turnout for that. Yeah, well, decent. I'd like to see more people come out. Uh, but it was definitely cool to have, you know, chew readers out there. But I, you know, I, I do get a little worried that um, if, you know, if this is still going on, you know, I know there's all sorts of talks about uh, vaccinations and other things like that. But um, it's it's still very creepy. And uh, have you ever seen, uh, what's it, 10 Cloverfields Road? Yes, I have. That's what I feel like right now. I mean, I'm literally down in the basement. We're hunkered down. I haven't been outside in a couple of days. There's a virus outside floating around that's going to get you. And, and I'm not did making... You not, did lo- you watch all of the Shelling Tales of Sabrina season three? I have not. So right, then I won't spoil it because there's something in the last two episodes of that. That's pretty much current events right now. There's this virus floating around in the air. Yeah. Every time I see that in the media now, I'm like... Well, I can't, you know, so we've gone to, you have to wear a face mask out in public. Um, And that's, more and more counties in Maryland are adopting that principle. And I I can't help but think of the comic book Breather, which is a really cool comic, and it has to deal with a virus, and you can't go outside, you know, the air is so tainted that you can't go outside without a mask on. And we're talking about, like, the gas masks, that that's the you know and people go about their daily business they go to the restaurants and as they go through the airlock to get into the restaurant the coffee shop or whatever then they can take their mask off but it, it deals with life in a situation like this and it's really funny because it's a great comic it's it's like an eight dollar you know cover price book but it's it's a really cool indie book but it's like it's hitting it dead on right now with um with what's going on you know that you kind of have to go outside with a mask if you're you know we don't go to the grocery store right now we uh order so we've got instacart that comes in uh, are you having any any issues with getting reserve times for that no no not around here so we actually put in we got an order in yesterday and my wife we're not getting toilet paper so um we had to (laughs) yes cornholio has become like the hero not the hero but like the spokesperson spokesperson of 2020 tp for my bungle so it's um it's kind of funny but like other than that so we got a we got a delivery two days ago and then my wife started another cart you know because we keep putting toilet paper in the cart and thankfully we got some and uh i want (laughs) to give a big shout out to cruiser uh gabriel cruz sent me toilet paper like I kid you not, okay, how did Cruiser have access to toilet paper? He then? he works out in uh, he's in Arizona and he works at um, I want to say Costco. I can't remember if it's Costco. Yeah, it's Costco. Um, and he so he was smart man. <laughs> a couple of years back, he had put a post on his um, Facebook page saying, "Look, something screwy is going to happen in the next couple of years. It's not a bad idea to start stockpiling some stuff." And a lot of his friends and family thought he was nuts, but. I, I, you say I was one of his friends who thought he was nuts, and now I'm not. Actually, I'm having to, the next time we're hanging out, when this is over, for you to kick me? But he was 100% correct. And uh, so he was like, hey, you know, I, I've got this stash. It's just the two of us. I'll send you some. And that by far was my uh, package of the week, was getting toilet paper in the mail. But my brother um, lives in a very rural area, um, and he had to go out grocery shopping. 
and he called me up. It's like, hey, they got a ton of toilet paper. Um, I don't need any. Do you want me to get you a couple of packs? And I'm like, yeah, man, absolutely. So he got me two 12 packs. So, I mean, we weren't out, but we were getting to the point where we're like, ah, what are we going to do here? You know, because it's four of us in the house and we're in the house 24 seven. Um, you know, my wife and I are both working from home. The kids are home. You know, they're being homeschooled now through the Board of Education. It's just everything is fundamentally changed. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not 100% certain in Jersey yet because I was talking to a friend of mine who was a teacher earlier. Did Maryland close their schools down for the rest of the year? No. So I heard Pennsylvania did, but. Um, Michigan, no, Michigan did. No, Pennsylvania did as well. Yep. So. Um, I don't know if that means past summer break into the fall or what, but um, like I said, you know, life has fundamentally changed. And like, you know, the fact that comics aren't coming out, Diamond is closed. And from what I hear, they have April 1st and April 8th books in in the warehouse. And they're just not shipping them. And I know a lot of comic shops are closing and all. So there was a, a site called the Comic Hub. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I heard about these clown shows. That's that's an interesting take because uh, certain people, Bleeding Cool, for example, they were saying this is the savior of the comic book market, that these guys were going to um, put digital copies of comics online that you could redeem later when they started shipping again. Uh, the stores would be selling them. The stores would be getting credit for the books, but you would get the physical copy later when they started to sell. The problem is... Neither publishers nor Diamond nor retail, you know, a bunch of retailers. Anyone who has a brain said screw you. Well, so the big thing is, and the thing that I don't think anybody really talked about was the fact that it's like $400 for the software and then like $100 a month, you know, to be a part of this. So we're talking, you know, the first month is $500 and then $100 each month. And that pretty much wipes away any discount that, you know, they can give or anything like that. It was just financially and logistically unfeasible to have this done. And this is ooh, this is the savior. Let me ask you this because I haven't seen this a lot. Uh, where did everyone started predicting the savior coming from all of a sudden with anything and everything? It seems like everyone has an opinion instead of trying to come up with a unified front of what's really going to help the industry go forward of us. I think everybody, just like anything else, is looking for someone to swoop in and just fix the problem. Because, I mean, for the longest time, DC wasn't saying anything. You know, Diamond has said, here's what we're doing. We're kind of, you know, closing down shop. But we haven't really heard anything from them. Marvel sent out in their Marvel mailer this week that, look, guys, just stay patient. We've got something in the works. We just need to see what this all is, you know? Um, so everybody wants a quick fix, and unfortunately, with what's going on right now, there is no quick there fix. Is, the, quick, the days of quick fix are dead, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and not only your comics, new com we have no new comics and Diamond is shut down. We have no new television, no new movies. Um, AMC, I heard rumors of AMC maybe, maybe gone by by permanently. Really? Something that they were really hurting, and they were thinking about chapter. I don't see it, because they're the second largest chain in the world, but everything you would have that would drive comic books to be where they are is kind of at a hall, too. Well, so movie theaters in general don't make mo money off the movie sales. They make money I off the... I know, where they, I know where they make their money. Yeah. The, the refreshments. Books. So, I can see that happening, but I hadn't heard anything about that but yeah, like any other in I've seen, I saw it in, in a couple of news dudes so I don't know how true that is yeah well but, I mean, that's a big possibility they're talking about the USPS you know the postal system shutting down in three months because of the amount of pack you know the, the, the cutting of how much mail is being mailed so, I mean, there's lots of industries in jeopardy. I mean, you know, of course, the, the government's not going to let... I could go on, but once again, I'd be breaking the, my contractual agreement with, with Agent Poyle. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, people complain about the postal system, but, I mean, you know, where else can you get a, a letter across, you know, the country in three days for, exactly. you know, a 50-cent stamp? I mean, you know... Who would pick that up? Amazon, possibly. Um, and, I mean, 
could we see the Amazon Postal Service? But, you know, I'm sure the... I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, they have everything else in their back pocket now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, I mean, let me just, uh, we'll do some, we can do a little bit of hidden gems over the phone. And that's, hey, let's roll with it. All right, so, Adam, what are you looking at right now? Like, what are the books that you're eyeing up? Those are the tales. Okay. Uh, Bible Tales 137 through 190. So, let in case people aren't familiar with Marvel Tales, Marvel Tales are reprints of Amazing Spider-Man, mostly at, at this time. Yes. So, I know the early ones... And issue one is really kind of a, a cool-looking old. It's got four origin tales, but yep. it does move to an Amazing Spider-Man-centric book. And I think a lot of people in the 80s kind of skipped over it because it was reprints. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that run from 137 to 190... Reprints Amazing 15 through 50, annuals 1 through 3, and they pretty much the original covers were just color touches. You know, some of them, I uh, swear that finished 20 books, and, you know, like 153 reprints 15, that there was Craven. You throw Scorpion in there, uh, so one si- the Marvel Tales 150 is a reprints annual number 1, that there was Sinister 6. It's a cheap way to read, and it's a, as the originals go up and up and up, a cheap buy-in for people who just want to rot. Yeah. Now, I know uh, some of the later issues, like uh, the one that reprints the first appearance of the Punisher, had a recolored cover, and that one goes for good money. Uh, well, they, they reprinted it twice. They were, the 106, that's the one I think you're thinking of. They also did it with the Mike Zek cover in 209. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, th- there's definitely cool books in that run. I came across, um, and I, you know, I had it here somewhere. I think I threw it in the box. How much I appreciated Marvel Comics Presents. Um, uh, there was a lot of Sam Keith stuff. There's um, Venom um, crossed over with Wolverine. Just some really cool books that, you know, just people don't think about. I mean, they're cheap, but they're also good reads, you know. And, and it's just cool stories. Even Marvel Age had some cool backup stuff. I'm actually digging that Marvel Age. Uh, yeah. That run, uh, like, 130, I'll buy one. Marvel Age 134 is all day long. Huh. So it's Beavis and Butthead in comics. So it's funny that you talk about that one because I just came across a stack and I have everything. I mean, I literally have everything lying around here. And I just came across a stack of Beavis and Butthead. I got two copies of number one, a copy of number two, a copy of number four. I only remember issue one off the top of my head. Uh, did any of them ever have the great Conholio on the cover? You know... No, not that I know of. I need to go back and look at. Is <coughs> that I would that would be that would be a book I would think would be up right now, just because he's the he's the spokesman for America right now. He is. He's the spokesman for 2020. He uh, done my that uh, no, I mean issue one is the scraping the jaw cover. Uh, issue two is them in a coffin. Issue three is the infamous. I think it's issue three. It could be issue ten. I don't remember the top of my head. It's this pillow fight between Black Cat and Silver Sable. Uh, I you know sadly I don't have three here. I've got four, which is the redhead, like yep. the buff redhead squeezing Beavis and Butthead, and five, which is the track and field issue. And it was just funny because I just came across these today when I was uh, going through a back issue box. Um, so I, I'm preparing because I've got another three long boxes of books coming out of storage um, tomorrow. So I kind of got to shift things around, and I've got, like I said, 20 short boxes coming in um, as I rearrange everything. I'm trying to get everything, everything, everything in alphabetical, alphanumeric order. It'll make you, it'll make you listing on eBay um, easier for you. Yeah, so over to this side, I've got uh, one stack, two stacks. Basically got three... Four stacks, uh, one, two, three, four, four stacks of um, oh, alphanumeric cool. comics. But then over to the side, I have all my sale books, the books you know that go up on eBay and that I have listings for right now. I put up a bunch of signed stuff and uh, put up some art germ signed books that are going, you know, that are doing well. Um, and you know, but I'm just trying to get it all in order. So I can come down here and be, you know, relaxed and not stressed. And I got to finish the wall behind me, um, all the all the little toys and you know framed comics and framed art and stuff like that. So, hey man, there's a there's a two 
toys I'm actually specking on right now. I'm specking on uh, the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars Hobgoblins. This is the first time a Hobgoblin was ever in an action figure. And I'm specking on the McDonald's Happy Meal Mary Janes. Because that was her third first time ever being in an action figure. Uh, see, what you need to do is a uh, action figure spotlight. Do uh, Blind Adam's Hidden Toys. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, um, and do one for us. I, I just, I just, well, I was, I was gonna pitch that idea a while back. I just don't want to step on Tyson's toes. Nah, I mean, Tyson hasn't um, been doing much lately. He's working a lot, so he's kind of faded off. He does a lot of action figure uh, photography. So he gets in figures, he, you know, opens the packages. He does really great dioramas and then, you know, poses the figures and gets really cool action shots with action figures. Now, I know he actually did um, he did a first aid video, a stop motion animation first aid video with action figures. That was really cool. Did you post a link to that on, uh, on Shoe yet or no? No, 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 no. He hasn't, he hasn't published it yet, but when it gets published, uh, I'll definitely... I have it out. It's, it's a pretty cool video. It's a short, like, 20-second video. Awesome yeah. And I love stop-motion animation, man. If I showed you some of the crappy stop-motion that I did as a kid, uh, you would just laugh. But I, I used to love stop-motion animation. I love photography and uh, videography. I guess the, the, the other book I always like to spec on during this time is the Lobo Paramilitary Christmas. It's basically Lobo. is hired by the Easter Bunny to kill Santa Claus. A spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Uh, it's the book's thirty years old. Yeah, uh, it's not really spoiler at this point. Basically, at the end, Lobo kills Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. So, I, you know, the funny thing was, you know, I've got the first appearance of Lobo down here. I never was a huge Lobo fan. Um, I I got the charm of it. You know, I read it. I just I just was never a huge fan of him. Um, but you know, to each their own. There's been other characters that I've liked that you know people are like, why do you like that book? But, you know, it's like Ralph Snart, for example. Now Comics, uh, Ralph Snart was a great book. It was full of humor. Uh, Boris the Bear, I've talked about my love for Boris, Boris the, the Bear. Boris the Bear is awesome. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there's kind of like, uh, and Lobo, Lobo's a character, I guess my problem with Lobo is always, he went from the super absurd all the way over to, like, meshing into the superhero universe. He, to me, was like a slapstick kind of character, you know? It was like, it almost didn't feel like he belonged in the DC universe proper. Sometimes. And that's why they would do books like, you know, Lobo's Paramilitary Christmas and stuff like that. Um, Which I think is one of the greatest holiday comics of all time. Because I love how it's like, at the end, it's Easter Bunny, he's jumping around, he's like, go, go, you just all happy, and then Lobo's like, oh, oh yeah? Blows him away, too. If anyone wants to watch it, a sand film, and someone did a sand film of it. And it was shot, it was really well done, it was shot to shot from the book. Hmm. I'll have to find that. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you via email later. Okay, cool. Cool. Can we all just get the S along? Well, I said S. I didn't use the word. I'm, I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm being. I'm being a good boy. So on the YouTube channel, he has no uh, editorial influence. So. All right. Know. So can we please just get the suck along? Yeah. I mean, um, comics need to shut up. This is not the time to be doing your crap. Everyone, stop. Point fingers. Let's all let's do some comic karma and just as a community, as an industry, get together and see what we're gonna do to survive when this is all over and we can get together again. Or be at a store, a convention, <coughs> at, at a bar, whatever the hell. Yeah, you know, and my fear is not well. I, and people talk about Marvel and DC shutting down. Um, if Marvel and DC go. I mean, a good portion of the comic book buying community is going with it. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's the mid-level publishers that I worry about. The small press guys, like Coffin Comics does great Kickstarters. Um, I just supported um, a Steak by David Byrne. Um, yeah, it's a great take on a vampire. This is the ash can that um, he sent out a while ago. This one's actually signed by him. And then it's a Derek Chu cover. And I've got the Vir Virgin cover right there, signed by Derek Chu. I mean, his Kickstarter, he did $20,000 or something like that for a Kickstarter. There's a Comics Tribe um, Kickstarter going on right now that's at like $25,000 for a book called She, S-H-E. Uh, it's a really cool book. I picked up the, the solo issue in New York Comic Con last year. So I don't think comics are going to go away. Um, yeah, I just... 
like I said, I, I just want things to get back to normal. Mm. I was, I'm in the process of when this is over, opening up my shop. No, more to that to come in the future. That's what I've been alluding to for the last six months. So now that I'm getting some answers out of my head, but this industry is my home, so I just I worry about its future. And the really sad thing is, is that in the midst of all this, you know, it's like a personal, like sad thing is comics heating up just celebrated its seventh anniversary as a website you know as an official website um you know as dot net so in in the midst of the comic market kind of dropping off we're celebrating our seventh anniversary out there as a website and uh it, it you know it's just kind of a sad it's like you know the birthday party that nobody can show up for um, oh, exactly um, and that's why if New York doesn't happen this year, because that's normally where we get together as comics heating up family, and, you know, all, because most of us are on the East Coast for comics heating up, um, with the exception of the Lana, who's out in Hawaii. Yeah, and Poyo's, uh, down south. Well, who's down south? Yeah, he's, Poyo, he's down uh, south. Well, he's, he's, he's not east, he's not east coast down south, he's down south, uh, kind of in the middle of the country. So. He's in the middle of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, you know, who, uh, but he's at New York Comic Con every year anyway. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he uh, comes up every year. So they, I was going to put him in for the seven year anniversary. I was going to put him in the chicken cage. So, and that to me is the saddest thing: is not getting to hang out with and seeing, you know, so many cool people. Um, I love running into readers of the site. You know, people who watch the YouTube videos. You know, and in general, people tend to be really nice. You know, there's of course there's you know people in the community who are not so nice, but you know, for the most part, everybody I run into is just really cool, down to earth. You know, the kind of people you want to just grab a beer with. With that, though, let's go ahead and end it. Uh, Adam, thanks for joining me tonight. Let's do this again next week. Um, hopefully, we'll have some updates and something uh, new going we'll on. Have some, we'll have some happy news by, by next week. Who knows? All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you um, next time. If you haven't done so, uh, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Thanks. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. One out of out.